Friday, July 20th. How are you? How are you? How are you? Got a lot of really good stuff here today. I got to get my comments on. I wish there was a way that I could automatically set that. I'll wait for some comments here. I see you're logging on. That's great. Um, so we have a lot of fun things today and something that's going to be a little bit of a brain twist and that's going to be taking all the information that Katie has given us and then um, so now what do you do with it? How do you take these abstract ideas and then start working on your project? And again, I'm a little bit the slow one. It took me a couple of times um, listening to her till I really got what what she was talking about. Okay, there we go. Howdy from Super Hot Wisconsin. You're from Green Bay, Susan, if I recall. If I recall. I love Wisconsin. Love Wisconsin. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to give you a Netflix, um, something you might want to watch, okay? Uh, yesterday, I watched Persuasion. And it is a Jane, a riff on a Jane Austen um, book. And it, it was interesting because it was very sweet. It was, um, you could watch it with grandma. You know, there's nothing to worry about. It's it just so sweet, kind of campy, kind of campy. There's some funny lines in there like, I never date a 10. I mean, obviously, that's a nowadays thing. And it kind of got slaughtered. And in the reviews. And so John and I were looking up going, what is, I mean, it was not heavy. It was just fun and light. And it was the Jane Austen fans were the ones that were not happy with because they did take, you know, one of her lovely works and then kind of, again, riffed on it. I mean, it was good. It was fun. So if you just need something that's lighthearted, it's a movie, it's not a series, persuasion. All right. And I've never re read Jane Austen, so I can't even begin to go down that alley. So the other thing I want to say is that I got the nicest package from um, Ernestine Love. Can you imagine having that for a last name? Ernestine Love. And and she sent, she was all wrapped up and I it was delivered to work and I just picked it up. And she sent me, okay, so here's the story. She went to a garage sale, an estate sale, almost 20 years ago, okay? And when she got there, she couldn't really find anything she wanted, but it was a 45-minute drive, so she was going to find something she wanted. And she bought something, and um, she put it, she put it away, forgot about it, and then now she's converting her um, house or room into a studio for her new 790 Bernina Plus. Remember, I still have those coupons, you guys. And so um, she found it. And so she was going to put it with all her antique linens. And she thought, this is ridiculous. So she sent it to me. And I want to do with whatever I want to do with it. Um, Ernestine, this is what I want to do with it. I love this. It's silk. It's just lovely. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I so appreciate it. That was just such a splendid, wonderful surprise. Thank you so much. And um, yeah. And actually, I wore this today, but where I would really wear this would be like if I'm at Houston and things like that, where I have to snap up the outfit just a little bit. And I might even wear it with a cream under and then some smashing jewelry like this, like that Lois gave me. I have to laugh. This was given to me by a gal in Paducah. This was given to me by Ernestine. This was given to me by Lois. And um, I do have my own underwear on. <laughs> So thank you. Okay, this two-week show is something really, really different. And I want to show you a little bit and then the trailer. And then I've got the best show and tell on Friday. Um, it is Mary McCarthy and she, Macaulay, I'm sorry. This is really not indicative of what she does, but this certainly caught our attention it was on the set, and this is a riff on Libby Lehman, right? But what Mary does is that she does things dimensional, 
All right. So look at the upper left hand, right hand corner where the green is. Here's a close up. So um, really, really cool. But what she likes to do are dimensional pieces. Well, okay, hold on. Let's just go take a look at it. And let's see. And then you won't believe what I'm going to show you on Friday. Okay. Um, I got to go here. I'm here. Let it rip, Alex. You can do it. On the next quilt show, just when you thought you'd seen it all, pop up goes the quilt. <laughs> Wait till you see the dynamic and dimensional quilts of Mary McCauley. She will show you how to make the most common pop-up stair step in fabric. Plus, Mary says even though her vessels seem very challenging, she promises you will recognize all the techniques she works with in making these stand-up stunners. When these are displayed, I ask the curator to put it down low enough for people to look in, and then I always put something inside to reward them for looking inside. <gasps> what you got? Oh. Mary's coming off the walls and coming up with all sorts of creative ways to quilt. Plus, don't miss Ricky's One Margarita Log Cabin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> this show is a buzz with possibilities. And we're sharing lots of extra laughs. <laughs> Join the party. Only on thequiltshow.com. I hope, I, by the way, that was Bonnie Hunter's foot you were seeing on my Facebook page. Okay, so she, it's just fun. It'll give you ideas for gifts and all that. And then wait till you see what they sent. Actually, she sent to Shelly. And I'll show that on Friday's show and tell. It was super awesome. But in the meantime, Miss Suzanne sent me a picture. And she doesn't know how to quilt this and she wants your guys's input also i have an idea but um well let's take a look at your stuff so suzanne this is a piece that she did and she stitched it all in the ditch okay great that's a good way to anchor it down and all that but then what then what do you do well, the first thing when you are going to quilt a quilt is you have to determine whether or not this is going to be something you snuggle on it under or something you um, hang on a wall. If I learned this from TQS. If it's going to be something you're going to snuggle under, you are not going to want it tightly quilted, okay? But let's take a look at what she's got going there with that one motif, um, that, hunk, that piece of paper. First of all, I would stitch it in the ditch no matter what, but I would add more quilting, okay? But Suzanne, we're going to go with that this is actually going to be a quilt that you're going, that you're going to want to snuggle under. I've just made that decision for you so that we can, you know, brainstorm appropriately. So here what we, here it is in the ditch, and honestly, it's not enough quilting, and it's not doing the quilt any favors in my humble opinion, okay? So here is that motif that is lovely and I have let's see if that's the same motif that she has yeah 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 okay I have an idea but I want to know what you guys think what if okay you've got some blocks first of all I like that you're crossing over the square within a square I like that you're not being confined into like the middle little dark square with the, then the white square around it and vice versa. Love it. But then something crossed my mind. What if, I'm just, I'm just now going to make your life uh, double H-E-double-L-L. -L. What if on the blocks with the dark frame you did a motif and then on the blocks with the light frame you do another motif in two motifs that look beautiful together? I think that might be more interesting than say do that one motif in every single block, which just means you have to do a little, you know, hunting around and, and you're going to want things that, something that balances off of each other. And I, I just don't think that'll be that hard to find. And, and, and or 
let's say you did crosshatch grid on the one that doesn't have the motif. No, I like the double, I like a double motif. What do you, what do you guys think? Oh, I, you can, um, oh, Katie Fowler's here. Yay. Let me finish this thought. You guys put down what you, what you think would be good. And, um, then she could take a look, see at it. But I will say this one thing, Suzanne, is that you can be sure when I have a quilt like this, I'm, I'm going to be looking at it for a while. I, I just am. It's, you're on the right track, but I think you could take it one notch more with another motif. Okay. So the fact that Katie's here means we can't talk bad about her behind her back. <laughs> I, would, I love Katie Fowler. So Katie, I'm going to ask you, um, you're home safe and sound. You loved Ireland, right? I bet you will. So there's a little bit of a delay here, but here we go. Okay, what are people saying? Um, I love the light golden color. Um, I just think two interlocking, two different type of motifs would be beautiful. Okay. All right. Okay. So you guys keep that going. But then again, I want to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I want you to pay attention to what Katie's going to say right now. Loved Ireland. Like, we love you. You don't know, Katie. People have been just digging on this series like there's no tomorrow. But what I left off on Monday was you've given us all these different things. And so the big question is now, so what? So now what do I do? I've got... I, I've got ways. I'm gonna, I think the number one thing I've gotten from you so far is open your eyes and look and assess what you're seeing. And then you start to understand design and relationships and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, so what if, so what she calls this I, are like, you got a blank piece of paper or a blank slate. Now what? Okay, let me quit yakking. If you have questions, put them up here now because we got the Katie lady herself. Here we go. Welcome back, Katie. Thank you so much for all of this information. And this is kind of a partial bow you're going to be putting on all of it, right? Yes. Yep. We're going to talk about, um, I call them design maps. And it's how to get from here to there. And it's it's just some really kind of simple, easy ideas that can get you started. Okay. And I love that you're presenting this in the form of quilts. Yay! We love our quilts. Okay. We do love our quilts. Okay. So this first one um, is, the, the map is horizontal line. And you can see the use of color. You can see the use of the contrasting. Um, that would probably be a good example of saturation. That turquoise line in the middle is much more saturated than the rest of the. The other paint is all transparent textile paint, and that turquoise line in the middle is acrylic paint. Is, is this like so, a paint quilt? It yes, it's a whole cloth painting that I then okay. layered and. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that line, I mean, even though you've got that vibrant yellow on top and everything, that that line is where your eye goes. And I want to point out, everybody, it's not like smack in the center. Don't do that. Right. And it's we're going to talk about that one, too. It's about a third. Okay. There's always a math person in my class who says, well, that's not really a third. I know. <laughs> Close enough. Remember, <laughs> just an idea. <laughs> Rock and roll is what I say. Oh gosh. Okay, here's a good one too. Here, we, oh, I love this. Okay, that that is the rule of thirds, and you can see how I um, that one's called. Don't tell me it's easier alone. A lot of these are named after songs. Um, I divided the, the that's a whole cloth painting, um, layered and stitched, and I divided the white prepared for Daikona cotton into about thirds with the vertical line and then that horizontal line. Okay, and I know I'm stop you right I'm here. Gonna... Okay, hold on. I'm seeing four, and that's because that strong horizontal line is carrying over to the right hand side. Okay, there are four sections. Okay, but if you if you would look at, let's make it a grid. Okay, and the grid is in thirds. So. The horizontal line goes all the way across. But I'm going to get the camera the, on you. Hold on a second. Let me find this thing. Okay, now the camera's on you. Say it again. The horizontal line goes all the way across the uh -huh. whole painting. 
and the vertical line goes all the way up and down. But if we were to continue to do that grid, it's not that it's divided into three parts, it's that the grid is in thirds. So we've put the quilt back up, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm like going, Dun. okay. I can see that in your face. Yeah. So um, if you look at the vertical line, that's kind of the little shiny turquoise. Like with the little squares, like a little snake. Yes. Up and down. That, that's about a third of the whole composition. That's at about one. If we folded that into three parts, that would be about on one of the folds. Yes. And the horizontal line, the red one that really does go across the whole piece is not. But the black one under the sun that sort of goes across the whole piece is about a, a third. third. Okay. Okay. So it's not so much that there are three parts. That's another one that we're going to talk about. It's that the space is divided into thirds. Okay. That makes sense. I did not see it. Thank you for clarifying that. I bet I'm not the only one. Okay. And if you look at some um, classic art, you will often see that um, if, it, if it doesn't have formal symmetry, the... Um, focal point is often at the intersection of those thirds. Okay. 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 That's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Rule of odds. Okay. I love this. So this, this is, thank you. This is if you have, we have three things there, right? So that is what you were trying to see in the last quilt. Mm -hmm. You were trying to see three sections. This one does have three things and it's got three circles and it's got three squares and odds are much more pleasing to our eyes than evens, unless it's formal symmetry, like the quilt that's behind me on my wall. Okay. Let me get rid of this thing so we can see. Okay. Um, can we see it? Can you see it? I can see it. Okay, I see it. I'm sorry, I have an overlay. Okay, so I see what you're talking about. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So that's formal symmetry. All parts of it, it's divided smack dab in the middle, and all of it is symmetrical. Perfect. But, yeah. Okay, now we go back to Joe Cunningham. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this yes. is not his quilt, people. This is not his quilt. No, I don't own a Joe Cunningham quilt, although that would be fabulous. Yeah. Uh, this is just a little tiny quilt, and the basis of this, the design map, was the line that starts in the lower left-hand corner and goes up to the top right. And then I just built on that line and built on that line, and then I thought, oh, I think I want to add a grid to that. And this is painted on there. Well, it's probably a lot of pen because um, it's a little tiny. But the line is the main that's what started the composition. So in the book, I say you are here for these design maps. And what they are, are they're, they're places to start. So if we look back at that second one, don't tell me it's easier alone that has like the Van Gogh sky in it. Uh, wait a minute, I got to get rid of this one. Hold on. I'm asking you to be pretty technical that one. So that one's about, I don't know, 25 by 40 maybe. And that's a big piece of plain white prepared for Daikona cotton to stare at on your work table. So what the design map was, was the vertical line that we talked about with the little shiny turquoise square type things and the horizontal line. I divided the space using that rule of thirds. That it's my starting place. I love that. Um, the, so the other thing I want to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to say one other thing here too, is um, look at the checkerboards. There's three. Look at the, the circles. There's groups. There's three groups. So there's your odd thing again. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the grid itself has formal symmetry. 
So that makes all that those loopy lines a little bit more comfortable to look at because the grid, it's like a railing on a cruise ship. It kind of keeps all that chaos in order. Interesting. Okay. Radial design. I made this out of Silomar. You mentioned a Silomar earlier in a class with Barbara Olson. And um, radial design simply means all the mandalas, which you're going to see several in the next session, but it simply means that the design builds outward from a central place. So when you sat down to make this, your brain says, okay, I am going to work from the, you're going to pick one of these roadmaps, you're going to choose it, and then that's where you're going to start, and then you're going to go. Yes. Okay. Except, okay. here's the cat. I've worked backwards. Oh, don't tell us that. <laughs> okay. I made the quilt, and then I fit the roadmap onto the quilt. Oh, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> For those of you who want foolproof, start with the roadmap, right? Okay. Yes, but it's kind of like we talked about in color and I don't want to be confusing. Okay, right. this is a perfect example. This quilt um, is called The Low Spark of High Heeled Boys. Love that song. I do too. And the four little triangles in the middle are a color cord. And don't ask me which one, but it's one of the overlays from my color wheel. The um, okay, blue, okay. Violet, violet, orange, yellow, orange, and yellow, green. Okay. And so I was going to make a quilt that just used that color cord. I can't do that. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. I got the first square done and then I added some values. And then I'm like, no, this needs more colors. I can't do this. So um, here's what I mean by I work backwards. These design maps now, um, this is a grid design map. So on this one, I did start by drawing the grid on the fabric. I used a ruler. Oh, horror. I hardly ever use rulers, mm -hmm. but I did. I used a ruler, drew that grid, then I drew the diagonal grid, and then I drew the circles. So I did start with the design map on this one. Then you filled it in. Then I filled it in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I didn't know all this stuff, like the Asilomar cilantro quilt. I picked that as a good example of radial design because I didn't want to use one of the mandalas, which is later in the book. Okay, okay. Um, this is all over pattern, um, which we talked about pattern in the principles of design section, but this is just, there's just a million bricks on there and lots of different fabrics so that the unity is the bricks, the shape of the bricks, the variation is the color and the type of fabric. There's silks, batiks, velvets, all sorts of things on there. And the circles are just magnificent and they just are all over, you know? Well, they're bricks. Oh yeah, bricks have holes. <laughs> they do, do they? Bricks oh, don't have holes. Yeah, they do, they have vertical holes. I'm not a brick layer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and last but certainly not least. This is framing. And I just started this with a frame. I learned this concept from Susan Shy, And um, you can see it's not perfect. I did not use a ruler. I like that, but not everybody does. So if you're not comfortable with how wonky this piece looks, don't make yours wonky. That's my message. If you don't like it, don't do it. This is a good example of framing. I drew the frame around the fabric and the inner frame. And then I put um, the Colosseum on there. And then I added me with the balloon. So this is a good example of goofed up scale and whimsy. 
You know, right. I did not float over the Coliseum holding on to a giant red balloon. Right. And I want to back up. Susan Shy has been on the show. We did a show with her. Her work is very different, very intriguing. But the part that will blow your mind is she's legally blind. So yeah. you might want to watch the Susan Shy show. That was really, really good. So um, I like this. In other words, don't, if you, or you're looking at a blank something, don't freak out. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. I'll do our little 30 second ad. So, you know, we've got one more class. Um, everything Katie's been talking about is in this book, which is, I have to tell you, it takes a lot to impress me with the book. Yeah. And, and I actually, I saw the book. I think I said in the beginning online, Katie was doing a flip through and I said, okay, we got to do something with this because it is too good. It's too good. And then we have the color wheel set. And I believe there's 10 in here. I believe there's 10 discs. And then um, if you buy both, we're going to throw this into her little, the starting of the Alice in Wonderland journey. So yeah, this is just, I, I self-published this. It's how I got to be on the quilt show. And um, it's, it's a creativity coaching session in a book. It talks yeah. about all that stuff we talked about in the second session, more in depth. Okay, now, um, I, I haven't said this in any of them, really, but you do do lectures, you teach and all that, but you're also a creative trainer coach. And I actually took, I took some lessons from you. And um, my, my big takeaway was I was so hard trying to be an artist and all of a sudden, and I think we touched on this in the beginning, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you're making, you're making, and that's what matters and what fills your heart and all that. And it was like a light bulb moment, Katie. Do you still do this for people? I, I do a little bit. Yes, I will. It, okay. It's, uh, yeah, I've gotten busier and you know, it's, it's, it's a time commitment, but yes, I do. I will. And what I talk, I don't give you answers. No, I don't know if you remember because that was a long time ago, but I ask a lot of questions. You made me have homework. Yeah. And your homework was very, it's, I'm not an accountability coach. Your homework was you had one tiny step. And sometimes it's as simple as having your cup of coffee in your sewing room. And one tiny question, one small question. And when we ask ourselves a small question, our subconscious brain works on it, works on it, works on it. That's why when you're standing in the shower or driving down the street, you think, oh, I know what I'm going to do about that because your brain has been working, working, working on it under the radar. And I thought it was when you're driving, or you're in the shower, you're into like repetitive movements, repetitive, 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 and then the creativity can jump in. Yes. I'm sure that's true yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what we talked about earlier, if you're stuck, go into your sewing room and piece your scraps together. Yeah, and that's, a whole, that's a whole Victoria Findlay Wolf thing, too. Marina Gilman, who lost her husband and couldn't get started and went into her sewing room and just started sewing scraps together, and it's turned into three books. And who was that? Raina Gilman. I don't, I, I'm not familiar. I'll have to look her up. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. So we have one last class, wah, and it is going to be putting it all together. And we're going to look at some of Katie's work and Katie mm -hmm. will explain all the different things, kind of like she just did here, but I think it is the solid bow for the whole thing. Great. Looking forward to it. Me too. Take care, baby. You too. See you soon. Hey, everybody. And somebody just came up and got on my lap. Um, so I was thrilled in listening to this thing, Katie. Every time I listen to it, it becomes more and more and more clear. And I know everybody has enjoyed you know what out of this whole series. So thank you so much. But one message I want to give you, Katie, you, is that I was talking to Joanne Sharp yesterday. And a lot of people on this are enjoying her online art classes as I am. She is going nuts over this color wheel. And I think she's going to might she might be implementing it in some of her future classes and, you know, with the, the 10 discs and all that. So super cool. A bunch of people were mentioned in this little vidcast. And if you are a subscribing member, 49 bucks a year, you can go watch these shows. 
And so, for instance, uh, Barbara Olson, we have a show with her, and that's who the class Katie was in when she was at Asilomar. We have uh, Joe Cunningham. He was our first show of ever taping. And then we've done some segments with him. Um, let me see. Um, Mary, um, Susan Shy. I mentioned it in there. You guys go watch that show. Amazing. And, of course, Victoria Finley Wolf. Now, I am going to have to look into Raina Gilman and see what her jam is. So, um, anyways, just a lot of really good information. It's kind of, it's good and solid. It's kind of out there, but it's, mm. so a little wrap up for today. Uh, my cat is no longer sp spanky white because she's learned to climb trees. <laughs> so her little white belly is just brown, okay? Um, also, Adair called this morning and they just got back from Hawaii and she has COVID. So I've gotta go um, get some things at the pharmacy for her. Um, we're talking about bricks now. <laughs> My mom had a brick collection. I'm gonna go take a look at it. We learned the weirdest stuff on these vidcasts. I just don't even know. So, Katie, thank you. Um, on Friday, we're going to do show and tell, and I'm going to be putting in Mary McCauley's show and tell. You will not believe what she made for us. If you go watch the show before, you'll have just fabulous perspective of what I'm going to be showing you. Um, and then, I know, Katie, things we obsess in. And so please go watch that show so that when you see what she made us, you'll just be like, oh. okay. And then Dee will not be here Saturday. She has retreats and it's one of her retreats. So she is going to be playing with some of you in person. And again, Ernestine, this is just lovely. You said you outgrew it. I'm almost outgrowing it. <laughs> I don't, if I totally outgrow it, I'm going to give it to Lilo because I know she would just go nuts over this top. It's silk. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And that's the other thing I'm finding at this age. Everybody's just kind of passing stuff where it needs to go because, you know, 40 years from now, our kids aren't going to understand it. So, no, I will not share the ties with you. Just saying. Keep collecting those ties. I brought it up to our group on our Tuesday meeting and all the women go, oh, I love that. We'll do around the holidays, a tie challenge. Okay. So there we go. John is in here. Do you have anything of importance? Uh, you interviewed Raina Gilman in oh, I interviewed Raina Gilman. Okay. Wait a minute. Did I interview her on a show or a, in, on thing? Oh, sorry, Raina. It's on YouTube. Well, I'm old. Okay, <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Raina. That's like asking somebody if they're pregnant and they're not. Okay, <laughs> you only have to do that once. I'm so sorry. Hey guys, have a good, good day, and I'll see you Friday.